There you go, Friday. Good boy. Yeah, good dog. This is Hummingbird Bed and Breakfast in the Applegate Valley in Oregon. And we're going to show you how to build an upside down fire, which is a very clean, burning, efficient way to build a fire. This is our large masonry stove that we build our fire in every day. And Dennis Miners is my husband and B&B host here at Hummingbird. And he's going to show us how he sets this up. If we were using a regular wood stove, the pieces of wood that go on next could be considerably larger than what we're using here, but this is a masonry stove and we want a quick hot fire. And so we're using wood that is pretty much the same size, but getting a little bit smaller on top. You want to stack this up so that the big logs are on the bottom and it gets smaller as you go up. And in this case, we're switching to a little bit of lumber. And then I think the next is some fur, which will catch a little faster than the oak and the drum. And uh, he's got a little bit of paper he's going to put in. And that paper is going to go in between the fur. And a little bit more paper. It's nestled in between the, the logs there. And then the kindling is going to go across the top of that. So when the paper burns, the kindling will settle down on top of the pieces of wood and continue to burn rather than just falling off the pile. And the advantage to this is when this fire is lighted, it will burn down completely from the top to the bottom without any more fussing and with a very clean burn. The reason for that is by the time the fire burns down to the bottom where the largest carbon mass is, there will be a very, very hot fire on top of it which will burn all the gases. It makes it much more efficient, burn hotter, and cleaner. So make sure that the burn on top is really strong because it has to last long enough to ignite that fur right below it. Here's that same fire about 10 minutes after it was lighted. We've moved outside now. This is the straw bale home that Dennis and I share with our bed and breakfast guests. And if we look in the window real closely here, you'll be able to see that the fire is burning very nicely. And then we will look up on the roof and see that there is no smoke coming out of this chimney. We are not adding any pollution to this clear blue winter sky. And that is the real beauty of an upside down fire. It's the same fire a little bit later. It still hasn't been touched or rearranged in any way. If this were a traditional metal wood stove where you wanted a fire to burn longer, you could add more wood at this point and not get much smoke because these coals are so hot that another couple of long would ignite very quickly and burn very cleanly. We hope that you've enjoyed watching this information about how to build an upside down fire. A great deal of the world's population heats and cooks with wood fires. And then there are those of us who just like to have a fire every evening in the winter and build campfires during the summer. And all of that smoke is actually making a greater contribution to pollution than we might think. So we made this video in hopes that you will post it on Facebook, post it on your YouTube channels and Twitter about it, any other way that you can think of to share it because this is information that is really important. We could actually make a difference in the world if we all built our fires upside down. Thank you so much for watching.